we have come to Ezekiel chapter 11 and chapter 12. Let's remember, Ezekiel was a Jewish captive by the river of Kibar. The house of Judah was already in captivity. From 604 BC, it started by the Babylonian Empire. Only Jerusalem was left to fall, and the king of the house of Israel, or the, or the, the house of Judah, sorry, in Jerusalem, the king Zedekiah, and, the, and Jerusalem was yet to fall. The house of Israel, the ten tribe house of Israel, had gone into the Assyrian captivity over a hundred years before Ezekiel came on the scene. Ezekiel's message is too primary, that the house of Israel, his main message is to those people. It's going to include Judah. It will include some other nations as we read on in the book of Ezekiel. But his main message was to the ten tribe house of Israel that was already had gone into captivity a hundred years before to the, the Assyrian captivity. When the Babylonian Empire rose, it conquered the Syrian people pushed them north, the house of Israel, ten-tribed house of Israel, went with the Assyrians north to the Black Sea area and eventually into Eastern Europe and then through Europe and formed over the centuries. Those people became the nations of Northwestern Europe, the Anglo-Saxon people of the British Commonwealth and the United States of America. We are the house of Israel. We are descended from them. I've also told you in the past to get this book. It is nearly a 500-page book. It's not that expensive from Amazon. And it will show you where all the nations of the world are today, where they had their biblical names and how they migrated and spread and what nations they are today in search of the origin of the nations. It will give you a key to understanding Old Testament Bible prophecies. You must know what nations are being talked about. And we have seen that indeed the people of the house of Israel became many of the nations of Europe, of Western Europe, and they did become the Anglo-Saxon people, the Angles and the Saxons, of the British Commonwealth, Anglo-Saxon British Commonwealth, and eventually the United States of America. We are the house of Israel, believe it or not. It does apply to you, and these prophecies of Ezekiel apply directly to you. We've also seen in Ezekiel that Jerusalem was a type to the house of Israel. What was going on in Jerusalem is a type of what is taking place amongst the nations of the house of Israel today. And so you must remember that, that Jerusalem is a type to the people of the house of Israel today. So we're going to pick it up in chapter 11 of Ezekiel. And I'm going to be reading from the New, the new Living Translation. I just had to look at it down there. The New Living Translation. So it has little headings here. Judgment on Israel's leaders. Chapter 11, then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me over to the east gateway of the Lord's temple, where I saw 25 prominent men. Verse 2, then the Spirit said to me, Son of man, these are the men who are responsible for the wicked counsel being given in this city, in the city of Jerusalem as a type also to the peoples of the house of Israel, our leaders are not fully godly men who are searching the word of God to lead our nations in the way that the word of God says that we should live and the way that we should practice and what we should believe in following his laws and commandments. These are leaders that are not really truly dedicated to the word of God. Yes, verse 2. Son of man, these are the men who are responsible for the wicked counsel being given in this city. Overall, our nations are being led into wicked counsel. Verse 3, they say to the people, is it not a good time to build houses? Is not everything going along just honky-dory? Isn't America great again? 
And then people are now saying, well, they want to make Britain great again. And so people are saying, isn't it time to build houses? We're prospering. We're doing well. We're the best economy in the world and so forth and so on. Our city is like an iron pot, people say. Inside it, we will be like meat, safe from all harm. Oh, we are the greatest uh, military power on the earth. Nobody can harm us. We are safe from all harm, is what we're being taught today in our Western nations. Verse 4. Therefore, son of man, prophesy against them loudly and clearly. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and told me to say, This is what the Lord says to the people of Israel. Is that what you are saying? Yes, I know it, for I know every thought that comes into your mind. You have murdered endlessly and filled your streets with the dead. Now, how do we murder endlessly in our Western nations today? Well, let me tell you, we do it by abortion on demand. The laws that we have set in motion that women can demand to have an abortion. And we think nothing, it seems, of killing the most innocent and helpless, the unborn children. Your Bible will tell you what God says is life and when man creates life, when it takes place. Your Bible will tell you that it is indeed at the time of conception. Even science should tell you that it's the time of conception. When the sperm enters the egg, there is human life. And God gives us, does not give us the right to end human life in birth. And that's how we are indeed just filling our streets with the dead every day. Verse 7, therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, this city is an iron pot, but the victims of your injustice are the pieces of meat, and you are not safe, for I will soon drag you from the city. So what was going to happen to the city of Jerusalem is a type of what will happen to our nations in the last days. I will drag you from the city. I will expose you to the war you so greatly fear, says the Sovereign Lord. And isn't that what we have been fearing for the last 50 or 60 years, is war? Verse 9, I will drive you out of Jerusalem and hand you over to foreigners. Again, this is going to happen to the city of Jerusalem, and it's a type of what will happen to the house of Israel people at the end time. I will drive you out of Jerusalem and hand you over to foreigners who will carry you out or will carry out my judgments against you. You will be slaughtered all the way to the borders of Israel, and then you will know that I am the Lord. No, this city will not be an iron pot for you, and you will not be the meat safe and inside of it. I will judge you even to the borders of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord, for you have refused to obey me. Instead, you have copied the sins of the nations around you. Where do we get January the 1st from? Where do we get Halloween from? Now, you need to go onto my website under God's Sabbath and Festivals section, and you need to read the book called Christian Feasts and Customs by a Catholic bishop who is very open, and he goes through all of these things in his book and plainly tells you where they came from and how so much of our, quote, Christianity is full of these things. You need to have the backbone to go on there and read his book, Christian Feasts and Customs. Verse 13, while I was still speaking, Pelatia, son of Benai, suddenly died. Then I fell down in the dust and cried out, O oh, sovereign Lord, are you going to kill everyone in Israel? Ezekiel knew that this was a type again, that this was the type of the death of the house of Israel in the last days. The heading in this Bible says, Hope for Exiled Israel. Verse 14, Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, the people still left in Jerusalem are talking about their relatives in exile, saying, 
They are far away from the Lord, so now he has given their land to us. Therefore, give the exiles this message from the sovereign Lord. Although I have scattered you in the countries of the world, I will be a sanctuary to you during your time of exile. Again, a type of what was happening to the house of Judah at that time is a type of what's going to happen, happen at the end time. Again, to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. There's a prophecy in one of the prophetic books of the Old Testament that says the house of Israel and the house of Judah will fall together at the same time. They didn't originally, but they will at the end time. They will fall together. Verse 18, when the people return to their homeland, they will remove every trace of their detestable idol worship. And I will give them singleness of heart and put a new spirit within them. I will take away their heart of stone and give them a tender heart instead. 20, so they will obey my laws and regulations and I will be their God. But as for those who long for idols, I will repay them fully for their sins, says the Sovereign Lord. Verse 22. When the cherubim lifted up their wings and rose up into the air with their wheels beside them, the glory of God of Israel hovered over them. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the city and stopped above the mountain on the east. Afterwards, the Spirit of God carried me back to Babylon, to the Judeans in exile there, and so ended the vision of my visit to Jerusalem. In vision, he was taken to Jerusalem, not literally, but in vision. And Jerusalem is a type for the house of Israel, as we learned in earlier chapters in Ezekiel. Verse 25, and I told the exiles everything the Lord had shown me. Signs of the coming exile, this uh, caption is here in this Bible I'm quoting from. Verse 12, again a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, you live among rebels who could see the truth if they wanted to, but they don't want to. They could hear if they wanted to listen, but they won't listen because they are rebellious. So now put on a demonstration to show them what it will be like to go off into exile. Pack whatever you can on your back and leave your home and go on a journey. Make your preparations in broad daylight so the people can see you. For perhaps they will yet consider what this means, even though they are such rebels. Bring your baggage outside during the day so they can watch you. Then as you are uh, watching, then as they are watching, leave your house in the evening, just as, as captives do when they begin a long journey to a distant land. Dig a hole through the wall while they are watching and carry your possessions out through it. As they watch, lift your pack to your shoulders and walk away into the night. Cover your face and don't look around. All of these actions will be a sign to the people of Israel, just like Jerusalem and what was going to happen would be a sign. Ezekiel now himself becomes a sign to the house of Israel as to what is going to happen to them in the last days. They are going to go into captivity. So I did as I was told. In broad daylight, I brought my pack outside, filled with the things I must carry to exile. Then in the evening, while the people looked on, I dug through the wall with my hands and went out into the darkness with my pack on my back. The next morning, this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, these rebels, the people of Israel, have asked you what all this means. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. These actions contain a message to Zerubbabel, the message to the king at the time in Jerusalem. Now, at the end time, when it happens to the house of Israel, there will be a king sitting upon the throne of Israel. Right now, there is a lady sitting on the throne of Israel. When these prophecies take place, there will be a king sitting on the throne of Israel, typified by Zedekiah here. Verse 11, then explain your actions are a demonstration of, of what will soon happen to them for they will be driven from their homes and sent away into exile. Zedekiah was to go to Babylon. The rest of Judah was to go to Babylon. There is a modern Babylon written about in the book of Revelation, chapter 17 and 18. The house of Israel with its king will eventually go into captivity to the modern Babylon. And it will take place. And these things will happen.
Verse 27, son of man, the people of Israel are saying, this vision won't come true for a long, long time. But it will, my friends, it will. God will shorten these days. And there will be no more talk that this is not going to happen for hundreds of years. It will come to pass.